Mr. Kid Rock is, I will say, <laughs> I like the music very much. That Mr. I like Mr. Mr. That's probably the first time Kid Rock's ever been referred to as Mr. Kid Rock. Yes, yeah. Mr. Kid Rock is an exceptional rocker and, and also uh, just an all-around great American, from what I understand. And he is very clear about the fact that while we're sitting here talking about the Babylon Bee having its Twitter account locked, this is, I know, I've been hit with fact checks from uh, PolitiFact and all this, and it's, they're always wrong when they do this, by the way. It's like they never actually are on the side of, never mind the angels, on the side of free speech, truth, you name it. I mean, they're just always in the wrong when they do this stuff. They pick these fights, big tech, and it's because if the big tech people making the decisions don't go along with this, they will have insane 25 to 35 year olds who are protesting outside their offices and like you're literally killing me by like not doing what i want they lose their minds they're a bunch of you know they watch too much uh, msnbc and comedy central and all the rest of it um here is kid rock just letting everybody know well sometimes you can't cancel people like him why haven't you been canceled like people aren't allowed to say what they think you are i am uncancelable why's that because i don't give a <laughs> And I'm not in bed with any big corporate things at the end of the day. There's nobody I'm beholden to, no record companies, no corporate interests, no nothing. And you can't cancel me. I, I love it when they try. I, I love hearing this, Clay. This is what we need. People, even irrespective of their spe- uh, specific politics, those look not every people listening to this will write in. They'll say, oh, but, you know, if I speak out, I'll lose my job. I'm like, look, if you're the junior accountant at XYZ Corporation, I don't want you getting fired from your job and not able to pay your bills and, you know, have your wife or your husband all stressed out because you want to post something political. OK, there are you know, you got to You got to have I always say have a plan to charge the machine gun nest. Don't just run up the hill. If you're Kid Rock, you're in, in this analogy, effectively bulletproof. There are people like that. They need to lead the charge of I'm not going to play this game anymore. Yeah, that's what's always been so frustrating to me about cancel culture in general is the people who already have enough resources, and I put myself in this category now. I, if, if I, I, first of all, I don't think that I could be easily canceled, right? Uh, but I have the resources to be able to say exactly what I think all day, every day. And there are so many people out there in business, politics, entertainment, that also have the resources to say exactly what they believe, and they're still afraid to do so. And I've said this before, Buck, but uh, if you don't say F you every now and then, what's the point of having F you money? Uh, it's, it, it is a conversation that I've had with a lot of people who agree with much of what you or I might say, but they're like, oh, I'm afraid of what might happen to me. I said, well, you've got $50 million in the bank. Why do you care? Like, your family's going to be fine. You, you don't even have to say anything. Cra- I mean, it doesn't even days, have to be crazy. You, you just yeah. have to say a man is a man. I mean, there's yeah. things that you could say that would get you in trouble. No one's asking someone, you know, you, you don't have to be some uh, some free speech radical who is out there on the... Our our most basic, the the fundamental right you have as a human being, never mind as an American, to say what is observable fact and true without reprisal against you from the society around you is something that is under assault right now. They are attacking fundamental, obvious truth and telling people to bend the knee over it. That's what I, you know, we're not, I wish we could sit here and say, oh, why can't we all just say whatever and say that, you know, no, that's not say whatever is now a man is a man. Well, it's crazy as Buck even saying women should not compete against men. Most sports writers are afraid to say it because they're afraid they might lose their jobs. I mean, that's the world that we're in right now. And I understand that if you make $50,000 a year and you've got a couple of kids in school and you're 58 years old and you're trying to close out the rest of your career, I understand why you could be incredibly nervous about that. But, I mean, the people who actually have real ability like why does Stephen A. Smith who is the most powerful person at ESPN why won't he go on his show and say hey you know what I'm fine with people choosing their gender if they want to but dudes shouldn't be swimming against girls because of how woke ESPN is he's got enough money to live on for the rest of his life he's being a coward he won't say it people who are used to being celebrated by the elites and are used to making 20 million dollars a year want that to continue even though they don't really need it. It doesn't make much difference to them one way or the other at a certain point. 
but it's all ego at that level. You, you know, you want to be the guy or the gal who's invited to the fancy cocktail parties where the people who are important and powerful and rich all get to sit around and determine that we're not allowed to se- uh, separate women from men in sports anymore. I mean, it's crazy. Kid Rock sees Fauci for what and who he is under all of this. Play it. What's your view of Fauci? <laughs> Fauci. <Yeah. laughs> you speak for many when you say that. Did you believe him at the beginning, Fauci? I believed all the bull at the beginning. Yeah. I mean, we were kind of shooting this documentary, and I'm like so embarrassed. I'm like in here, like everyone's spraying off UPS packages. I'm like spraying on the doorknobs. And like a couple months of that, I'm like, what? It's like, so this pretty much like is, is knocking out overweight, unhealthy people? I'm like, I'm good. And so are most of my friends. I, and, you know, I'd seen some clips of that Tucker Carlson I interview it. with you told I'm going to watch the whole thing. Apparently I told you I told you this morning. I was like, dude, you got to I mean, I, they played a bunch of it on Tucker last night. But um, oh, we've got mutual friends, uh, obviously, here in Nashville. He pulled up to uh, the Kid Rock did, Buck. You would have loved this. He got his own. You know how like you can have uh, and I'm not a huge car truck guy. I'm meaning that I'm not super knowledgeable about them, but they have all the special editions. And they have like the different logo, like, you know, there's a King Ranch special edition, I think F-150, if I screw that up. Uh, But you can make up your own special edition tags and just put them on your car. So Kid Rock pulls up in a brand new Rolls Royce and he has got a Let's Go Brandon uh, special edition package on the Rolls Royce. So if you look at it, it looks like Rolls Royce <laughs> made a special edition Let's Go Brandon version of the Rolls Royce. I mean, it was Buck. I mean, first of all, Kid Rock is hysterical. Uh, and I love the entire interview. And there's an incongruous pairing, odd couple style with Tucker interviewing him. You know, Tucker's got on his, uh, you know, his button down shirt and his sweater and Kid Rock sitting over there in a T-shirt smoking a cigar, you know, uh, crazy hair, um, sunglasses look. And it is, I mean, it's phenomenal. Yeah, it's we, a really we entertaining We need more Kid interview. Rock on the music scene. I remember when he got really big in the 90s. I, I, I love Kid. I celebrated his whole catalog. I've been to his concert several times. My wife's from Detroit, which is where Kid Rock's from, so she was early on. And, man, they're entertaining. So much fun to go to.